We are Epic, Epic Alpha, Bravo, and Delta, and don't you forget, Charlie does not exist. My name is ACB The Man, and you are listening to Radio Epic. All right, so hopefully for the few that are listening, this is Radio Epic Podcast number 21. My name is ACB The Man, and I have Benelli. How are you doing, Benelli? Uh I'm doing great tonight. Well, good. You won't be doing great in just a second after we play some Iron Banner. But uh, David Allen, how David Allen three five three? Excuse me. How are you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing well. Uh, so, guys, Doc was supposed to be here tonight. Something happened. Doc's going to be back eventually. Um, I'm so sad that he's not here. But for those of you watching, we are going to talk about. We are going to talk about. Um, uh, what are we gonna do? Oh, we are going to talk about the Iron Man. Excuse me. We are going to get a little salty. Other, by the way, we're starting. But we are going to talk about the both the good and the bad. So first off, how are you enjoying Iron Banner? What are some positives from Iron Banner before we start to make any comments? I mean, the auto rifle and pulse rifle are decent. Okay. I've got something to say about that, but being Ellie, you got any uh, positive? Uh, I mean, I, I think the uh, 4v4 uh, game, you know, like matching is uh, rather interesting in Iron Banner. Um, it's, I mean, it's like all the rest of the Crucible stuff, but uh, it's kind of... It's a little different. I don't know how to take it just yet, but... Uh, by the way, another team of three on the other team, and it's going to be two ranges. But, um, so, uh, the thing that I really enjoy about Iron Banner is I know exactly what game mode I'm going to play. By the way, before we get started, uh, your mic will pick up all of the controller stuff, and this is more of a mic for myself, so just hold it down if you can. Anyways, and for those listening, sorry if you hear that. Anyways, um... So I like that I can know exactly I'm playing control. I know why they put multiple game modes in one playlist, but I know exactly what game I'm going to play. There's nothing going to change that I'm playing control. And that's pretty much what I like about Iron Banner. So you talked about the connections and who they matched you up with. I found that Iron Banner has been ridiculously sweaty, especially if you have a team full of people that have similar... Um, skill and have uh, just similar play styles and stuff like that. So if you're playing with a team that does very well together, I find that I have a little bit more sweaty matches. If I'm playing with a team that has super varied uh, KADs or skill, then we are getting a little bit more easier matches. Sometimes we get steamrolled, but the wider the skill gap on your team, it seems the better the matches are for having this casual versus competitive. And I understand the Iron Banner is technically supposed to be like the best of the best going against each other. But with the reward system like it is, we'll get to it in just a second, there's no need to have all these sweaty matches. And I actually had to quit on uh, Saturday night from a combination of sweaty matches and uh, just no rewards. And so what are your guys' take on the matching system? You know, I actually enjoy matches where there's some challenge to it. Um, actually having to think about more of just like, oh, I, you know, we can't die here the last 10 seconds so we can win or, you know, whatever it may be. But I really do enjoy the, the challenge that, uh, has come because of you know various pvp changes um but at the same time like also too there's just some as with like when we first started destiny you know it's there's the uh just simple fact that you know if you get in a 3v4 you're kind of screwed um well especially in uh by the way down the bottom middle ramp there was a hunter it's in this um so especially with destiny 2 how team shotting is just ridiculously important now. 
Uh, it's just, it is something that you need to be wary of. And if you are, think if you are a team of four, essentially four running gun commando style players, you're gonna have a hard time, especially when they pitch you up against those down in the bottom left, like three or four, put pitch you up against those teams that are very good at the team shotting and know exactly what they want out of their gameplay. Uh, the one thing that I have, though, is I want to go in and have some fun. And so I'm having a hard time when... Oh, crap. I'm having a hard time when uh, I'm supposed to be having some fun and every single match is ridiculously sweaty. Now, like I said earlier, I understand where they're coming from. I understand that they're supposed to be the best of the best. But with power levels not mattering, and power levels to an extent really didn't matter in Destiny 1 anyways. Um, if you were within like 30 power level or 30 light levels, it really didn't matter. But with power levels not mattering, why do we need all these sweaty matches? Why do we need such extensive um, skill-based matchmaking? And it's the same way in kind of casual PvP. Where why do we need this extensive skill-based matchmaking if... I don't, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, if power's not mattering and we're just kind of having fun to maybe get weapons and armor, why do we need all the sweaty? And I'm not saying sweaty's bad. Sweaty's very good. That's how you become a better player is the more, the more, um, adversity you have to do, the more, uh, you know, punishment you have to take can make you better. But I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, David, do you have anything different? Uh, I mean, not really. Uh, well, I find not so much like the that the matches are particularly unbalanced. It just seems like the way the game's set up, particularly with the spawns being so terrible, that one team gets on a roll and you can be up by 30 points very quickly and then there's no coming back. It's just a slog to the end because you're not going to score fast enough. Well, especially, like just right now, they're pulling ahead by about 12 points and we're not, since we're talking, we're not thinking about staying together. Because of that, they've got this... Like you said, they have this momentum that's very hard to break, which which is okay. Oh, crap, that was a rocket launcher. Which is okay. It's just, you know, very hard to deal with. By the way, shotgun coming towards us. Um, that guy has a shotgun, so watch out. He's so let's try to go get B really fast if we can, guys. But other than that, I mean, the, the gameplay is not bad. It's Iron Banner. You're just trying to kill everybody. It's control, so get the points. Get more points per kill. I mean, it, it's it's uh, pretty similar, but it can get frustrating when you're going against sweaty team after sweaty team after golden gun. Um, and so it, it's one or the other. The problem that I'm having with it, I guess, is when we have um, when we are told like, "Hey, you're gonna have super sweaty matches." But the armor isn't really there. We're not really guaranteed here. And we can get into that in a second. I don't know if it's worth going in and doing sweaty, sweaty matches. So guys, how have you, how's your gear drops been in this Iron Banner? I mean, for myself, out of my two characters that I've got, um, I've had... I've played more on my hunter than I have my Titan. Uh but I've I've gotten three out of the five uh like armor pieces. And then I've gotten I not entirely sure how many uh weapons there are. Um but I think I've gotten most of them, if not all of them. So I mean Level ups or just faction stuff. Um, probably like twelve or fifteen, somewhere in there. Like I've been playing it quite a bit, but not like Our Strider coming our way, hit him with secondaries if we can. Um uh, so that's very interesting because you apparently have hit a magic number where you have fifteen and you've pretty much gotten everything. There are people who've got thirty, thirty two, forty who have not gotten everything. And I know it's very RNG-based. But David, how's your loot experience? 
Uh, decent. I would say I got uh, most of what I wanted. Still like the scout rifle. But um, it's been pretty decent. I got some armor, the weapons I wanted, and... I mean, it, not, not terrible. It's just very upsetting that, like, you don't get any end, end game drops. Whereas, like, before we were trained, hey, stick through this match, maybe you'll get something. You just kind of have to collect tokens, which isn't as fun. Because you don't well, have that. Well, and also, and also, how many tokens do you get for losing? You get two. How many do you get for winning? Five. If you win a match, you generally play for eight to ten minutes. If you lose a match, you can lose a match in two minutes. So what's what's the incentive to not just tank your K, your uh, win loss ratio and just get all those tokens? Because you can get, I mean, you can get the tokens in roughly the same amount of time, or heck, even faster if you just tank. And that's what some people were saying on Reddit. People were saying, no, that breaks the spirit of the game. But my loot, um, man, I cast Hammer so way too far back. That's okay. Here, have a hammer. My experience is I've leveled up twice. I got the Fusion Rifle twice. So I'm about to be... Uh, I got the Fusion Rifle twice. And I got some guns that I can get from running strikes. I got zero of the armor. So that, with like five sweaty matches in a row, I quit playing Iron Banner. Iron Banner, for me, used to be a place I could level up. Used to be a place I knew I was getting guaranteed gear. Now, if you level up fast enough, uh, or enough, you can get all the gear. If you take into the account that this is not the only Iron Banner this season, then you can get gear from the other Iron Banners. I understand that. But what is the want to go if my first two Iron Banner level ups got me the same weapon and weapons I can get outside of the Iron Banner loot pool. It, it, to me, it's it's very reminiscent of the, the problems we have as a whole of Destiny 2 right now, where the token system's fine, and a lot of other places give us gear at the end. At the end of strikes, we can potentially get gear. Um, you can randomly get engrams playing the um, raid, or just something like that, but you're not going to get those in gear drops, and especially if your RNG happens to be bad, or if the RNG gods don't smile upon you, then you're sitting there opening package after package, getting the same thing or getting stuff you can get outside of Iron Banner. Now, the uh, shaders are dropping like uh, candy. But, I mean, I almost don't want the shader if I'm not getting one of the cool guns or something like that. Uh, I think it's just a problem that we have of right now of what are we playing this game to do? Is there any, is there anything to strive at? Exactly. And like the, going back to Destiny 1 comparison, like, yeah, like even if the loot drops are the same, you get to end up with the same amount of gear. In Destiny 1, it was when you got to rank 3, you could buy this item. You could get to rank 4, this, five, rank 5, you can buy these items. And it was clearly a, these are good items. They generally had very good rolls. And if you leveled up, this is the gun you're going to get. And so it was a clear goal of grind this activity, do this, here's your reward. Rather than people rank up 15, 20 times and still searching for the last, I don't know, gloves or scout rifle or whatever they want. So it's just, it feels like it's more pun. It feels like it's more punishing with the RNG, where it's not even like, you prove yourself to be worthy of the iron with lords, and thus you can buy their special gun. It's just, eh, here's another slot machine. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, now, don't get me wrong, I enjoy the token system outside of Iron Banner. I enjoy that if I do enough things, I'm guaranteed a some sort of loot. But Iron Banner just seems an odd place to continue to incorporate that. They didn't even add gear that levels you up. In Destiny 1, that was the first time I hit max level after the Dark Below was Iron Banner. Uh, after the Take King hit, the first time I hit max light level was from Iron Banner. After uh, Rise of Iron, I didn't hit max light level, but I got my first real legendary weapon drops from Rise of Iron were Iron Banner weapon drops. Or Iron Banner uh, gear. 
and I was guaranteed decent gear by the end of it. Um, in Destiny 1, sort of, that was their idea of their fixed weapon rolls, was the weapon rolls they gave you and said, hey, you can get this gun when you hit rank 5. I think there needs to be something like that. So go back to sort of a hybrid of the systems. You can get those level ups, which give you armor, which give you weapons and stuff like that. Just like the old system would randomly give you armor and stuff at the end of the match. But have some sort of ranking system so you can know, hey, if my RNG sucks, I can go get... Oh, crap, we need to put these spawns quick. My RNG sucks, we can go get the weapon, right? That's what I want. Yeah, I could I could agree with that. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I've kind of found that as being a, a major problem, too, with uh, Destiny 2 in general has been the... Uh, the fact that you can't just go buy weapons that are good from any of the vendors. You have to, like, just get them, which you know, I've been playing enough that it hasn't been a problem for me, but I know for you, ACB, you know, it's not as easy for you to play as much, that kind of thing. Yeah, so I mean, I like, mean, I'm, pl I'm playing on the weekends, uh, essentially. Like, I'm playing right now, but if I wasn't playing right now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have played tonight. Yeah. So, I mean, I can see where, like, it, for you, it would be more difficult to, um, you know, be able to get gear like that, especially since you don't play as often. So, I can I can understand it. It just, for me, I guess, like I said, I haven't really noticed it because I've been playing so much. Um, I mean, I've, I've, uh, I mean, I'm already in, like, 15 raid clears, and I've played Iron Banner on both characters, and gotten all the packages and stuff and it's been ridiculous but um yeah i guess uh being able to at least buy like even if it's just a weapon you know each time or something like that would probably help most out um with getting getting the gear or getting uh you know, whatever they want out of it so i mean i could see that i, I don't know you know if Drop rates have been affected or anything like that. I mean, I still seem to be doing okay on getting gear myself, but, uh, you know, like I said, I, I might be a little bit out of the majority here because I do play way too much. <laughs> well, and, like, I used to play way too much when I probably shouldn't have been. Um, but it's just, I don't know. And then the game is more for casuals, so um, if you think about it, I do now have more time to grind for it. Next Iron Banner comes around, I still have something that I'm looking for, armor armor sets or stuff like that. I mean, I'm still looking for stuff, but when compared to Destiny 1, when I had a guaranteed thing I was going to get, and I knew if I spent this amount of time, that even if I lost and lost and lost and lost, I would eventually get, I would eventually get something uh, for that week. It, you know, it, it, it now... I do have to say that there's, there's something that's happening to me a little bit, and I'm not sure if it's Destiny Burnout finally or what. But I'm having a ton of fun going back and playing Skyrim on 360 and 720p, maybe not even 720p, in all its glory. And um, I'm just having a lot of fun not playing Destiny because I don't feel like there's something I should be going for. And so I don't know if that is, that's not just Iron Banner, I can tell you that. Um, to the right of me, I can tell you that. It's not just Iron Banner. But it's just, I'm not having a lot of fun. I may not be having a lot of fun uh, as much as possible. And that's not an Iron Banner thing. That is a Destiny 2 thing. And I love Destiny 2, don't get me wrong. I thoroughly enjoy it. I was going to say, I think from Destiny 2's standpoint, I mean, when you think about it, um, Destiny 2, from what I understand, is way better so far in its, you know, early stages than Destiny 1 was. Um, but when you think about it, you know, we're kind of comparing a, like, let's say, like, a, a quarter-made game to a fully-made game from Destiny 1. You know, I mean, yeah, we're going to get more stuff. It's not like this is the only part of the game we're going to get. Um, so I think we have to also keep in mind that, yeah, we're going to be bored for a little bit at the beginning, 
But like after you know an expansion or two, we we should have way more things to do. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and and um, this game was in the works when uh, Rise of Iron was out. So some of those things that made Rise of Iron good are not in this game yet. Oh crap! That's Golden Gun by the Heavy. Um, I pulled it though. I think no, they just pulled it. Anyways, um. Golden Gun by the Heavy. I just said that. Tonight. Oh no! But some of the things that made Rise of Iron good, like private matches and stuff like that, will come. I believe they just were not implemented into this version of Destiny because this version of Destiny kind of went on a separate track from what I. I mean, I can't. You know, obviously don't work it, Bungie. But that's my guess. And so some of that stuff will come. It's just, and they've said that they're trying to make this a more casual centered game. So they are looking to make this more for everybody. That bell curve, um, in Destiny 1, you had, uh, you had most of the players that were very, very, very good, and the game catered to those players. In Destiny 2, they're looking for the middle of that bell curve and trying to cater to as many people as possible. And so some of us who played a ton of Destiny 2, or Destiny 1, excuse me, or some of us who still want to play a ton of Destiny 2 aren't seeing the benefits because we play more than the average player. And I guess I'm turning into more of an average player lately. But it's just... It, 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 now, don't get me wrong. I really love this game. I'm going to continue to play it. I'll play it every week. It's just, I think, like you said, until we get more to actually do... We are, you know, going to feel that, to the right of me, we're going to feel that uh, lack of content. Yeah, I mean, yeah, go ahead, David. I think part of it, reason is, there doesn't seem to be a sense of progress. Like, one of the thing, great things they came out with in year one was the like the record book, so the first moments of triumph, and then yes, that year two they had a moment of triumph, and so we got used to our our progress through the game is going to be reported in this book. Like they made the mistake of with the first Sparrow Racing League, we had to buy it. That was a mistake. But once they said, you know what, these books are a good idea, they brought them out, and it was great because here's a checklist of everything to do in the game, and once you do it, you've beaten the game. And we'll give you a reward, and it would be nice if they had that, like. Well, and it was ridiculous things, like, Rise of Iron was like, do all the raids on, uh, the new updated levels, uh, do all the challenges. So, like, there were things in there that were worth while and were difficult. And I don't know if we see, I mean, the raid's difficult, but do we really. Pride's Invisible. Do we really say we don't have anything telling us to do the raid except gear that really isn't put towards the raid? Oh, and it could still also go back to the same thing too of like you know maybe we are going to get a book of some sort or you know uh, not an achievement track but you know like a accomplishment you know a way to track our accomplishments. I mean, and as we've said, obviously that we feel that there's not enough content right now. Maybe they're waiting for enough content to make a book that's worth it. Um, I mean, you know, when Rise of Iron came out, there was a lot of things to do, um, plus stuff in the previous DLCs, and like when Age of Triumph came out, you know, there was still a lot of new stuff to do and things to redo or whatever. I mean, there's really not a whole lot at the moment to do you know you can do the raid you can do the nightfall you can do strikes you can do crucible that's really about it there's not a whole lot to to add to it and maybe they could have done a book or something like that you know to get us started but you know i mean if you're gonna go through all the effort you might as well do it when you actually have enough content to do it um, yeah well and think about this pc has not come out if they started making all these tweaks and changes right now, PC version is going to think, well, they don't really care about them. And I know that's not the case. 
But I think we need to take a step back, and I need to take a step back and say, hey, PC's coming out, and then they're going to do sandbox changes after a week or two. PC's coming out, and then they're going to address some of these issues that the that even though the PC seeing them as issues, they can say, hey, we want both the PC and the console to be on the same level. We care about both of them as much. And so I think if we just wait, uh, a lot of these will come in, will, will be taken care of. And I don't mean like wait until the next DLC. I think some of these things will be taken care of. Maybe we won't get a record book before the next DLC, but uh, some drop rates or, or the amount of things we can get or even Iron Banner have taken away all of the non-Iron Banner loot so the loot pool is small or something like that. I think we will get these and um, I think this is just a consequence of us having an amazing game like you said and now we're back to vanilla. It's straight up vanilla and we just are not able to see where they're going. Now understandably we don't work there but we're not able to see where they're going and so we are all saying, well, what about this? What about that? It's coming. Just wait. Well, that's true. But again, the, the issue is like they might have this great plan and they might be thinking it's going to get better, but they don't tell us. So we just see what they have in the game and it feels just incomplete. Like they try calling oh, it they, collect. They rush C and we have, uh, oh, we have a chiller. Yeah, they're all, at, they're all for it, C, and we have somebody who wasn't moving. <sighs> right. Sorry, David. Anyway, so like, I think Luke Smith gave an interview where he called it a collection game. But there's nothing in the game to collect. Like, the only thing we have is emblems. There's no dead ghosts, there's no SIVA clusters. Well, there's all the things you can scan with your ghosts that don't even show up on BNET because uh, there's no there more and more. Right, like there's no way of knowing that, hey, I've gone through and I've spent 10 hours finding all these little ghosts. And there's no recognition of it. We need to stick more together. It's a team of two and two randoms, and they're kicking our rear. They're coming They're coming to be... Oh, our, our random's moving. Random, run away. Anyways, um... So yeah, yeah, it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of that stuff that made Destiny one as special as it as we wound up, even though it was flawed, thinking it was. So I mean, it, it's definitely going to get better. And and they have said that uh, the the fixed roles are going to stay. They don't really think they're thinking about how to make fixed roles better. M remember, they even said. How is our 10th Better Devils drop when, during the beta? And they're still thinking about that. They're still trying to go around and say, how can our 50th raid rocket launcher drop? How can that be better? I mean, so they're, they're, they're thinking about all these things. And like I said, I think we just gotta wait till PC drops to, uh, see some of the, uh, changes that they might implement. You know, to, to, to touch on the whole PC drop and waiting for that, um, you know, it's, there, there are things that maybe they are waiting to get fixed when PC comes out, um, but there's still, as we've kind of touched on a little bit, there are things that they could fix now and hot fix, um, just to make, like, a quality of life better for the people actually playing the game now versus the people that will be playing the game here in the future. Um, you know, I mean, cause there's, there's several, uh, uh, different games that actually have a PC version and a, uh, you know, a console version like smites one that I can name off the top of my head. Um, you know, world of tanks is another one that, uh, you know, like, I mean, those ones started on PC and then went to console, so it's backwards. But at the same time, like, you know, like, the PC version has a patch and then the console version has a patch. So it could just be very well that, again, like, maybe they're waiting for PC to come out and then they're going to start that, you know, one has a patch and then the other has a patch uh, to uh, 
uh, you know, kind of make up that thing. Because I'm guessing that console is going to actually uh, maybe have more players, at least to start with, um, you know, than PC will. It might shift over time, but... And they even said that they can tune things differently. Um, they've said that before the game came out. They, they have a dedicated uh, PC team that is willing to tune things differently on each. And, um, well, but they, I they think, would have to. But I think what we're talking about is we're not talking about a lot of the, um, like, hand cannons need to be adjusted on PC because they just don't have the right amount of uh, aim assist for a mouse. I think what we're talking about is stuff that is going to be uh, useful on both. Well, it's not even it's not even that. It's just they're you know the you have two completely different games how they operate. Well, not different games, but two systems that operate completely differently from each other. So, like you know, some stuff that is in the PC version uh, won't work ex they won't work exactly like it does on the console. Um, otherwise, I mean, you they would like wouldn't have to worry about. You know, like for Smite, you wouldn't send out a patch for Smite on PC and then like a week later come out with a patch for, yeah, um, you know, because they're, I mean, in, you know, the, all reality, they are technically two different systems. And so... Well, and they, and they could easily, they could easily say, hey guys, on the PC, there were some things that weren't working well, so we went ahead and patched them in on Xbox and they're, hey, either already out for you or they're going to be out very, very soon. And so, I, I mean, I just wish they would do a couple more things. And they said they're listening, but it just doesn't seem like they're... Uh, Smash coming to see. Smash coming to see. It just doesn't seem like we're getting... I don't know. It, it's, doesn't it's not, like, it doesn't seem like we're getting anything, is what you're saying. Right. And, yeah. And like I said, I'm not trying to hate on the game. I love the game. I'm going to play it forever and ever and ever. It's just... Well, uh, was there any actual news, guys, that we wanted to touch on this week? I don't think so. One thing that kind of bothered me that I noticed is if you looked at uh, Shaxit, not Shaxit, Saladin's flavor test decks, it said he's the last of the Iron Lords, which made me question two things. One, what about Efferdeet? And two, I thought the whole point of Rise of Iron was we became the new generation of Iron Lords. Well, it could be, it could just be a last of the old Iron Lords or something like that. Um, I don't know. Um, right. It, I was just saying because it felt like, yeah, we spent this whole game. Uh, shotgun coming into A. This whole game of Rise of Iron, like proving ourselves to the Iron Lords, and it doesn't seem like Shax noticed it. Well, also, like I said, this game came out before, um, this game was in development before Rise of Iron, so maybe some of that lore hasn't been pushed in game yet because technically we weren't Iron Lords. I mean, I, and that, that's a poor excuse. That's a poor main's excuse. But yeah, I was gonna say that sh that should not have been a problem to just fix some flavor text. I mean, it's not like the entire game is you know uh, centered around him or anything like that. So like that's pretty a, would be a pretty poor excuse if that was their excuse for it. Um, and maybe. And maybe there's something down the line that will explain that, but, you know, again, we don't know for sure. We, we won't know until it actually happens. Um, it'd be interesting, because, you know, I miss my uh, Miss Lady Ephrodite, but whatever, you know. Well, and, and, and think about this, though. Technically, we got uh, destroyed, so maybe there's something that they're going to come out and say, oh, well, she got murderized by the balls. So, I don't know. Yeah, it could be, but I don't know. It just seems like they don't even care enough to complete their story. Like, well, like that's I think, of... honestly, I think this is in that case. I think that's just a a meeting of accidentally, like something was just. Missed. I think it was just something missed where they're worried about getting Destiny Two out, and they happen to just miss. Uh, guys, I'm gonna drop us at the tower. Hopefully, we have enough. Um, but. Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess we just spent this episode kind of saying what we would like and what we, we don't like. It's just 
Before we go, guys, I do want to say I enjoy playing this game. I've said it a bunch. I'm going to say it. It's not. I'm not trying to be a super hater. It's just some things that hopefully will get better, and they should. Um, is there any last uh, last minute things that we want to say before we kind of pop it out of here, guys? Nope. Nope. I'm good. All right. Well, guys, this has been episode twenty-one. I promise in the future we'll have more actual discussion and less just. Saying that now, overall, uh, you know, Iron Banner to me, honestly, is a positive for most. But uh, you know, things can definitely get better. So I want to thank Finelli and David Allen three five three so for playing some Iron Banner and for chatting about Iron Banner. And next week we can get back. Hopefully, Doc will be here. Uh, once we finally figure that out, uh, we may move to a different service to talk other than Discord. But once we do figure that out, we will get him back on here. Probably.